So we connect it. Instead of writing 1000, we will write 10,000. But even then, we don't write what it is. It's only a clerical error. It's human. You will just uh, rub it correctly and send it. Here also, it begins with error in verse 12. Then, if those errors are not corrected, we become conscious of, of it, and then it becomes a secret fault. That secret fault, if it is repeated again and again, it becomes a presumptuous sin. Presumptuous sin means I will do like that. There is an example in Numbers chapter 13. Moses is telling them, please, or keep this open 19. Numbers chapter 13. Uh, so, uh, Numbers chapter 14 and verse 42. Moses is telling them, Lord is angry with you because you have brought a very wrong report, a very depressing report. You don't have faith in the Lord. So many things Moses counseled them and the spite return. But immediately those people said, no, immediately we will go and fight against the other side. Moses said, don't go. The Lord is not among you. But what did they do? 44. They presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not of his camp. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites and dwelt in the hill and smote them and discomfited them. Presumptuous sins means in Hindi it is called Jataika Park. But when it is start, error. Error became a secret for Then we get presumptuous sin and then ended in a great transgression. If we neglect to correct our errors, and if you keep on repeating them, that is where we will end. Now, how we can overcome this presumptuous sin in the words of Lord Jesus Christ? Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22 and verse 29. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22 and verse 29. How we can we know our errors? If we know the scriptures, if we know the scriptures, we can know our errors. Because the word of God is very, very powerful. In the smallest of things, it leads us if we have that desire. Uh, we are learning because we don't know the scriptures, and because we don't know the scriptures, we don't understand the power of God working for us. So, if you want to overcome this presumptuous sin, be careful about the errors about which you are not very, very uh, serious. So, Psalm 19, verses 12 and 13, begins with an error, goes on to become a secret form, then it becomes presumptuous, and then it ends with a great translation. So may the Lord give us understanding to follow the scriptures very carefully, so that even small errors, they can be detected, and then we can correct ourselves before falling into the faith. Second. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. All must die. When the church raptures, does it mean that we die or we will be taken up like three now in a meter? This is a question to understand about the first resurrection. The first resurrection, or what we call the middle resurrection, or we can call the secret resurrection. When the Lord will come in the middle. That is given to us very clearly in uh, 1 Thessalonians in chapter 4. This is what will happen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 16 and 17. For the Lord is going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, 
and of the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive that remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with him. This is the sequence in which it will happen. When the Lord is going to come in the middle, when he will come in the middle, where is it written he will come in the middle? Huh? Uh, where is the word? Or uh, is it in the one Corinthians chapter 15? It is just an information. Huh? Verse 17. Ah, when the Lord is here. Verse 17. To meet the Lord in the air, he will not come to the ground. He will be in the air. Then, those who are dead in Christ, they will rise up from there. Philip will come one day, or not one day, during the funeral of the Chambok Lambert. I was translating for him. I don't know from where he gathered that uh, uh, little bit of information. He said, when the Lord will come, exactly this 80 kilos of Champa Kalava, though it is brought into the mud, that 80 kilos will be gathered and converted into glorious form. That will happen for the dead. And suppose if we are alive, after that will happen, immediately it will come to us. And if we are alive and in the faith, we also will be changed, transformed. We will not see that. And we will also have a glorified body. And both these people, the one who are dead in Christ and those who are alive, they will be transformed and they will have glorified body. They will meet the Lord in the air and they will go away. How long will we take to finish this transaction? No, this is the only piece of information. But how does it help me? What, how does it help me, you know? There is a prayer in the, the last prayer of the Bible. What is it? The last prayer of the Bible. Even so, how long will we take to answer that prayer? If he comes with the blink of an eye, three blink of an eye. That means there will not be time even to feel sorry for what I have been doing or I have done. Shama Mahana will be time in the middle. That piece of information about first resurrection must put some fear into my heart. Lord, there will not be time even to say sorry. There will be no time even to repent. There will be no time even for parents to counsel their children. There will be no time to call somebody and say, please help me. No, nothing can be done. Nothing can be done. So, what I strongly feel about all these things is, it is good to know, but what is the lesson behind it? I know that it will happen, that it is rise and rise, this will be there, that will be there, good, that will be there. What I learn is, Lord, if this prayer is answered in a twinkling of an eye, I will not have time even to say sorry. Once the church is raptured, there will be no Holy Spirit. There will be nobody to pray for you. There will be nobody to share any comfort with you. It's going to be too terrible. It's going to be too terrible. And then in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, the Lord says, Because you have refused to obey my gospel, now I will help you not to obey me. Can you find such a word? This morning in our family prayer, I was, I don't know why uh, I, so long I have read the Bible more than 45 times. But till today I couldn't find that expression. But today in the morning family prayer, I found that expression. God was so disturbed about the behavior and attitude of his people. He sent me the word to us here. He says, I will frame such statues which will not be good for you, and you will follow those statues and you will fall into them. <coughs> Can you understand? Look into that, but I'm not saying my own. Ezekiel chapter 20. I was very surprised this morning when I was, we were having time with Ezekiel chapter 20. 
how likely we have taken our Christian life, beloved, which we receive at the cost of the life of Jesus. What a price he paid, but how likely we are considering our salvation. Ezekiel chapter 20, uh, and verse uh, 25. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not move. <laughs> Can we understand that God is saying, I will give you statutes which are not good. So we can, so this will happen after the uh, rapture of the church. Now I will, this is the warning. Uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 7. But the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let us will let. Until he be taken out of the way. The mystery of iniquity is already working. But who is resisting it? The Holy Spirit of God. And once the work of the Holy Spirit in preparing the church is finished, the Holy Spirit also will be taken away. There will be no restraining power upon this earth for the evil. Then, which was working like a mystery, it will be manifested. Then we will come to an exactly this is the anti. And then what will happen? What's eight? And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his mouth. Verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe on that. 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In simple words, because we did not believe the truth, what I was telling you, the gospel of truth, the gospel of insight. Now I will send you one special spirit that you will believe a lie. So, anybody who doesn't have this assurance of salvation, they are clearly that is a great event which will happen anytime. It will be finished in the twinkling of the night. You will not have the time even to say sorry. That's how my daughter was born again. Did I share the testimony? What will I do, Daddy? And only if you go. So the Lord is speaking to us. This was the question. All must die. Very true. When the church raptures, does it mean that we die or we will be taken away like we not an answer? If we are alive. We will be taken away like Enoch and Elijah. And if we die like Moses, then also we can appear in glory along with the Lord God on the Mount of Transfiguration. Now, the question is who are the dead in Christ who will take part in that? That is very, very important. There was an understanding that all believers will be taken away. Four or five years ago, a Hindu convert, his name is uh, Jasher. He is in South Korea. And he was in Pune assembly for some time. He was a, he's a Japanese translator. He's from Andhra Pradesh. He was the only one born again in his house. He married a young girl who was the only one uh, uh, born again in, in her house. They had a son and they called me for the son of dedication. We had a public meeting. The brother who came to translate for me, I mentioned something about the second coming. When he is a very popular translator in that room. When he came down, then he is asking Yana, what did you see after death? I said, yes, not all believers will take part in the resurrection. What are you saying, sir? I thought before the coming of the Antichrist, Lord Jesus will come and take a all his sin. It was the year 1971. During one of the evening meetings in Jehovah Shammah convocation, the word was preached, not all believers will take part in the in this first generation. Eddie Williams uncle is a great uh, preacher of the word of God himself. He was troubled. He was completely confused. Along with his two prayer partners, Simon Mayfield and Solomon Mayfield, they finished their work. They prayed till one o'clock in the night. And then at one o'clock in the night, they went to the boxing on the first floor. They knocked his door, the boxing was very uh, surprised. What happened, sir? Brother, this evening we have heard the message that not all believers will take part in the first resurrection. What do you say? 
It took him hardly a second to say, yes, that is true. Even a person like Brother Eddie Miller, he himself told him. He had that notion till 1971. He was born again in 1948. 1458, 68, 70. For 23 years, he was thinking that all we would be good. But when he heard that word, he confirmed it through the great service of God. He said, Not all we would be take part in the first generation. How frightening that is. One is, if you are not born again, you can finish in the twinkling of the night. Secondly, even if you are born again, we must know from the scriptures who are those dead who will take part in the first generation. I have told you something, I will repeat it once again for you to remember. First category, who will take part? Genesis 5:24, those who are walking with the Lord like Enoch. Secondly, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 10. Those who are ready like wise virgins with black and oil, they go away. Thirdly, the book of Hebrews, chapter 2nd Timothy, second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. Those who love the appearing of the Lord, like Paul the Apostle. And fourthly, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28, those who look forward for his coming. And then Revelation chapter 21 and verse 7, those who are overcomers. Think about it. What are the visiting things which I have to overcome? Yesterday we saw just one thing. Walking in the midst of the candlesticks, the glorified Lord Jesus writes it very carefully. He's telling them, You have so seen so many good things in your power, but I want to tell you one thing you have lost your first love. And when we compare the scriptures, we came to understand the maintaining of first love means willing to suffer pain and sorrow in the heart. How that? So, this is how we can read the scriptures and see God. Is there anything for me to overcome? Is there anything where I'm falling? I want to do my first words, Lord. Talking about the first words, yesterday we heard that what was the first work of the young people in the church? Huh? My brother came yesterday itself and asked me, Uncle, please tell how we have to remove that from the house of God. Do you know what the first thought came to me? This is how, in very subtle ways, it can deceive me. Immediately we think, what is the death in Bethel that I have done? It is not in Bethel. This is the temple. What is the temple? This is the temple. Jesus Christ always tells the truth. He tells the truth to the common man, to the people. He will tell the truth to the Pharisees. He will tell the truth even to the priests. And because he told the truth, all the people together, they put right on the cross. What did he tell the priest? This is not the temple. The temple in Jerusalem was a national symbol and a national pride for Israelites. The priests in those days, when you read Jeremiah chapter 7, they used to tell, don't believe this man, Jeremiah, he's telling all the path matters. We have the temple. We have the temple. God is in the temple. Which enemy can uh, uh, miss over for us? So, in the name of the temple, they were deceiving the people of God. Then the Lord Jesus said, don't take pride in them. This is the true temple. So, when I look at my own temple, the house of God, where the Holy Spirit was, then I find some things which have to be removed. Yesterday we saw some waves. Then again we saw some sins. This way, afternoon, just to answer that question, I'll tell you one thing. There are ideas in our heart which have to be put away, which have to be thrown away. See Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 3. Anybody can read the book of Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 3. Son of man, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. These have set up their idols in their heart. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Uh, Should I be inquired of at all by them? See? Should we not remove idols from our heart? Invisible things. We don't have idols of silver. Very true. We don't have idols of gold. We don't have any visible idols. But idols in the heart. These days, our self is so dominant because of wisdom, because of money, because of many, many other accomplishments. 
or self is so dominant that I want to please myself and I want to be comfortable with you. Think about it. As long as I'm comfortable with you, you will be my wife. The day I find you uncomfortable, I will be yourself. That is an idea. As long as you pamper me in this house, I will be very comfortable here. I will come. The day you say something like this, I leave this church and go to some other comfortable church. And I want to tell you, there is no comfortable church in the whole world. Because Jesus himself said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That means every church will have some gates of hell that will prevail. Where will you find comfortable church? But you want to be comfortable. That is an idea. You don't want to be disturbed. You don't want to be rattled in your thinking. You are so settled in your ways, in your thinking, in your concepts, in your ideas that you don't want to be disturbed. Huh? Young people also nowadays, they have their own set of ideas and concepts. So these are some of the ideas. For some people, money may be an idea. For some people, a name may be an idea. For some people, the chair may become an idea. Sometimes they receive letters uh, from the elder and underneath they put a stamp, trustee, and they sign it. <laughs> I remember what the boxing used to say, chairman of the broken chair. <laughs> so like the trustee of the broken trust. Uh, see, all these things have become my means for us, and they are not allowing the law to occupy the tool of our heart and to accomplish, accomplish some purpose. Huh? Some weights we got from 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1, and then, sir, then we are because of those weights and weights and everything, we are not able to run the race. So we have to remove them. And as Peter says, lay aside, lay aside means that in the morning when you go to your, your bathroom, you take out your old clothes and you put it into the bin. Unless it is washed, you will not even touch it again. Like that, throw it away. And then put on fresh clothes. Do away with it, all those things. All the ways, all the dissenting sins in your life. And the third thing is be careful about the ideas. Be careful about the ideas. Nobody can see them. But you know what ideas we are talking It may be money. For some people, it is their job. For some people, it is their career. For some people, it is their friends. For some people, it may be some wisdom. No? Fashion also may be an idea nowadays. Whatever you may say, but no, the fashion is so many things. May the Lord deal with it, cleanse the hearts of our life so that there will not be any hindrance whatsoever. It is our duty now to cleanse the temple of our life because if I am cleansed, you are cleansed, he is cleansed, we all are cleansed. And if, yeah, yeah, let him lie down, let him lie down. And he, let him lie down. Ah, he's quiet, let him lie down. Very good. Go to sleep with that. Yeah. Say Amen. <laughs> we are peacefully he's sleeping and therefore we are in peace. So if I'm cleansed, I've thrown away, like a young man, I have cleansed the temple, I have removed death from my own life. You also have done it. And we will be both come into the house of God. How will this house be? Clean up. It is not this house. The entity of this Bethel depends upon you and me. The testimony of Bethel depends upon you and me. So, in our personal lives, let us cleanse that to ourselves from all these things, from all these disciplines, from all these ideas, from anything. It may not be gold, silver, visible things, but some of the visible things. So, that's the truth in this. So what was the question you were answering? Ah. This uh, about the rapture. So may the Lord give us a small understanding that there is true, it is going to happen. Lord Jesus Christ promised it, and uh, all the apostles made a great earnest effort to say, I want to somehow attain this event. The Jordan Khan, in one of my young days, I used to play the harmony, and I used to sit in the front line, and he was sharing the word. Thank God that it did not hit my face. He said, Jab kali se ukhali jayega, aur jab aap apne school, college, daftar, na jaunga, tere dost asa laaf maare ni. 
क्यों अरे मूर्ख का आदमी तुझको मालूम था ये ऐसा होगा तू भी नहीं गया हमको भी नहीं बुलाया foolish man you knew that there is something on first resurrection among these things you also did not go and you did not tell us also how sick is the matter this dear young people it is not a great thing to know the information but what is that lesson which has changed my thinking which has changed my own behavior and my lifestyle that is more important so be careful there is a greatest even we are looking forward to which can happen any time and that will finish in the twinkling of an eye no time to say even sorry no time to repent no time to ask for any help nobody will know what is happening it will happen in the future so may the lord give us grace to work up our own salvation with fear and trembling i keep on repeating i keep on praying lord in the midst of all the present responses May we never ever forget that we have to be ready for the end. Third question: Why Christ's birth was delivered to shepherds only? Is there any Old Testament prophecy related to this? I do not know. And uh, any uh, uh, any gifts of delivering the message to shepherds only? I don't know. Here, yeah. some theologian wants to ask this question. As far as I know, there is no prophecy in the world. Give it to shepherds. Yeah? So thank God, the shepherds who are considered to be the abomination of the world. You know, shepherds are not considered to be good; they are considered to be abominable in this world. But to such people, the news has come, and those shepherds have brought that news to us. How good our God is! Next question: By faith and through faith, what is the difference? Is faith still applicable after Jesus came to this earth? By faith and through faith, the difference you have to understand only uh, somebody who has done MA in English. <laughs> For me, faith is uh, I don't understand. By faith and through faith, what is the difference? I do not understand. You must contact somebody who has done it MA in English. <laughs> Now, next, is uh, faith still applicable after Jesus came to this earth? Yes, very much. Even after Jesus came to this earth, you have to believe that He has come for me. There is one historical faith. Man Mohan Singh also says, Modi also says, we have to follow the pathway of Jesus. So that is historical faith, but it did not do any good to him. There is one faith of the devils. They confess you are the holy son of God, but they say, what have you to do with us? That means they have nothing to do with you. One is intellectual faith. One in a Christian family, if somebody asks you, you will say, yeah, Jesus was the real person. He came into this world. The faith what we are talking about is personal faith. Jesus Christ loved me. That's what Paul says in Galatians two twenty. Jesus Christ loved me and gave Himself for me. The price He paid it was for me. I'm so precious in His sight. So that is the faith, and that faith which was continued in you, as we heard, that living faith in the gospel must become strong faith in the promise. It must become an overcoming faith as we look at the person, Lord Jesus Christ, whom we want to see, and then that wonder-working faith. The day when the Lord will appear, we are going to hear that voice. We will be transformed, and we. There are many, many what about incentives to take part in the first election. <laughs> One particular young man he asked me some years ago, "Or tell me." Can we eat after getting glorified bodies? He is a lover of food. Then I said, "Yes, we can eat food." He said, "Jesus Christ, after resurrection, he had broiled fish." What did he say? You know, at least to have this knowledge, I must take part in first resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> so you also make up your own incentive. At least for this, I must take part in first resurrection. Another question: What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? This is something very mystical, which we cannot properly explain, properly realize. Also, the Bible tells us the more the Holy Spirit works in three ways. Firstly, it works from the outside. In Genesis chapter six and verse three, the Lord is saying, "My Spirit will not always strive with you." So, from the outside, the Spirit will be arguing with me, striving with me, pricking me, and doing all these things. But a day comes when I respond 
to the trippings and the promptings of the Holy Spirit, the strivings and arguments of the Holy Spirit, the moment I confess it, Ephesians 1 13 says, the Holy Spirit sees me. Immediately, the Holy Spirit takes the control over me and says, You are belonging to me. And then the Holy Spirit immediately brings me out of the world and puts me into the body of Christ. This is something mystical, which we may not like to understand, we may not understand, but we read that in the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. This is the most wonderful work of the Holy Spirit which he does. And as we come under the control of the Holy Spirit, he starts to fill us. He starts to take control of the members of our body. Then we realize that we have been brought into a wonderful mystical body, which is called the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. Whereas the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many, as one body, so also is Christ. Verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. This is what happens the moment we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit takes us and puts us into the world. We have been separated from the world and put into the church. We have been separated from the kingdom of Satan. We have brought into the kingdom of God. We are separated from the world and brought into the house of God. This is what the Holy Spirit does. It takes a little time to understand. Very sadly, I would like to say that even those believers who are 50 years old also may not understand. That's the reason we maintain still differences. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. It strives with us, then it seals us, bringing us into the body, and then Ephesians 5 will be. It begins to fill us with divinity. Today my hands will come under his control. Tomorrow my eyes will come under his control. And then my legs will come under his control. Slowly, slowly, little by little, as the Holy Spirit keeps on controlling me, my thoughts also he will control. That is called the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Huh? That uh, is in short. Where is it written about full time God servant in the Bible? <laughs> Let me tell you, there are two uh, types of persons in the administration of the church. One is a servant of God and the other is an elder. What is the difference between a servant of God and an elder? Please open with me to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 1. Yes, the servants of Jesus Christ. First group, servants of Jesus Christ. Continue. Who are the saints? In saints are the second group. Which are in Timothy, the bishops and deacons. Bishops are the third, deacons are the first. All the four groups are mentioned in the place. Okay. Servants of God, then come saints, then bishops and deacons. In the order we see the servants of God are mentioned first. Paul called himself as a servant of God. Was he not a saint? Is he not a saint? He's a saint. Servant of God is a call. Bishop, who is called an elder, it is an office. The elders are occupying that office. Because of some conditions or because of some uh, clauses which are mentioned in 1 Timothy chapter 3. An elder must be like this, an elder must be like this. But regarding the servant of God, it is a call given by the Lord and he has to prove himself as a servant of God. No worldliness is mentioned about us, servant of God. Then why did you have God call him? Does he have any special abilities? All these questions only Jesus will answer when we meet him. Lord, why did you call him and why you would not call him? Nobody can become a servant of the Lord as a full time unless he receives the call. 
Hannah has a desire that her son should serve the Lord. She brought him into the temple. He was growing in the presence of the Lord. But the, uh, he had to receive the call, Samuel, Samuel. Only then it came to the understanding of A.D. and all brothers that this boy is uh, separated to be a prophet unto his life. But the bishop, it is an office. If you fulfill those qualifications, you also can desire to become a bishop. But man on his own, a believer on his own, he cannot become that full time. He has to receive that call. That is the basic difference. Where is it written about full time God servant in the Bible? When you read the scriptures, and especially the Acts of the Apostles and about the disciples of old, we come to understand that all of them have to leave their jobs, have to leave their business, have to sacrifice so much in order to follow the Lord as apostles and prophets. These servants of God, whom we call the full time servants of God, although the term is not a full time, it means when they received the call, they also they left their jobs, they left their property, they left their families, they left their kindred and everything and began to follow. One more thing. A servant of God may work locally and then according to the Lord's will, according to the plan the Lord has for him, he may be used even in different areas, but elders is very strictly confined only to a local church. An elder of Bethel, he cannot exercise any authority over the people in Philadelphia. In a city, there may be 20 branches. The elder is localized office. An elder of one branch, he cannot say that I am the elder of the other branches also. That is localized office. But a servant of God, who has been called out by name according to God's will and according to the plan God has for him, he may keep on serving sometimes here, sometimes there, here and there. there. That is the understanding what I have to say. Second, what is the need of full time God's servant in the local church? I will not go into any controversial statements. We are the flock. What are we called? We are the sheep following the shepherd. Sheep is the only animal in the world which requires care 24 by 7, night and day. It's the only animal. It cannot be left alone even in the night time. The shepherd, during the daytime, he keeps on leading them, feeding them, giving them water, this and that, everything. And night time, when he brings them, he shuts them into the door and he doesn't go back home. He sleeps at the door. In those days, there were no upper buildings like this. It's a door, he will put some rod there and he will be sleeping. That's what Jacob said. Daytime the sun hit upon my face, nighttime my head was filled with dew. The life of a shepherd is very, very hard. Very, very hard. Practically, I have seen wonderful blessings falling upon the local congregation who had the ministry of a Full-time shepherd and a full-time servant. You call him at one o'clock in the night, he will come to praise. You are going to the hospital at three o'clock in the morning, he will certainly follow you to heaven. We can't expect this from those who are having a full-time job. Try as much as they can. They are doing only up to a limit. They have their own place, they have their own responsibilities, they have their own duties. But when you talk about a shepherd, when you talk about a full time servant of God, he doesn't have any time, he doesn't have any vacation, he doesn't have anything. It's been 27 years since I came out of my house, I did not take one day vacation. I don't know what is vacation, going just to meet somebody. Is it? So, if the local congregation has such a person, like a shepherd, what assurance it gives to you. 
you have somebody on whom you can count 24 by 7, night and day you can call it, night and day you can count upon. And if the Lord has called him with the spirit of a shepherd, very tenderly he will lead, so that is the advantage. Because this question has come, I don't know, may I put this burden of my heart to you. You also pray. I will, I will beseech Brother John Albert and all his other co-workers also. Though people consider you like a father figure, but still, we have our own limitations along the job. You pray, Lord, we are like flock, we are like sheep. We need your care 24 by 7. Somebody who can counsel us, somebody who can visit us, somebody who can take care of our children also. Somebody who can take care of everything else. So if that is uh, uh, the Lord arranges, it will be a great blessing. And what are the roles and responsibilities of full time local God's children? What is the responsibility? You know, don't give him a vacation. <laughs> huh? If the Lord sends you a boss and tell him this is your role, you don't you should not take one day vacation after. And so that is some of the patients which we have asked them. Now it's a very big paper. <laughs> Can we believers and followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wear gold and silver chains and rings from top to bottom back to top? <laughs> I'm tempted to look at some of them and you'll be true like this. <laughs> huh? Before I show you two scriptures, I want to make these two statements. First thing is, wearing of jewelry comes under the subject of sanctification, not under salvation. Salvation means by faith. I have believed and I have put my trust in the Lord. And uh, God is forgiven. For salvation, faith and faith and faith. But this topic of jewelry comes under sanctification. And this process of sanctification, it develops in our life the more we love the Lord, the more we are separated from the world, and the more we are faithful to it. Amy Carmichael, one of the finest Irish missionaries who came to India. She was working in Danaur among all these uh, small girls who became widows in the early days. And uh, two things I loved about her testimony. I, in the early years of my ministry, I used to have multiple copies of her Bible. She has not written her Bible, somebody else has written. So every young girl I used to distribute, not only in Pune, but elsewhere also, I used to carry on. She was a 27 year old young girl, and one day she went for a horse ride. And during that horse ride, a scar came open because of the wind, and her hair was flowing wildly in the breeze. Imagine a fair young girl with hair flowing, and she is sitting on a horse and galloping. What a bewitching sight that is! When she returned, the bishop was standing in the veranda. And the moment she came down and she was about to pass by him and go into the room, he called and said, Have you come to show Jesus or yourself in this country? He asked. Have you come to show yourself or you have come to preach about the Lord Jesus Christ? She could have answered. It is written in bracket parenthesis. She could have answered, Sir. The reins of the horse were in my both hands, and it was the wind which took away my scarf. If I try to once again pull my hair or do something, I may lose even my life. But she says, I didn't open my mouth. In bold letter written within, I got a chance to die. She could have justified herself. She could have told that old man, and that old man would have, but she said, I didn't open my mouth. I got a chance to die. What a strange. How many times I have tried to justify myself and put down the other man. I have lost a chance to die. My father used to say, I am also an imperfect human being. Even if I am wrong, 
you don't open your mouth. Children, listen carefully. My father used to say, even if I'm wrong, you think I'm wrong, but still you don't open your mouth. Second, because she was in Chennai, it is a South India. Gold is very precious there. Somebody asked her, why don't you have jewelry? She answered, what has the soul in her to do with gold and silver? What does a soul winner has to do with gold and silver? What an answer. As I told you, beloved, whoever has asked this question, I do not know. The wearing of jewelry does not come under the subject of salvation because salvation is purely by faith. This comes under the subject of sanctification. If you want to know the truth, Hebrews 10, 10 says very clearly, salvation and sanctification will go together. By the same will, you are sanctified. Which will? By the will which you are born again, in the same will you will be sanctified. Only one sacrifice, only one sacrifice. For salvation also the same sacrifice, for sanctification also the same sacrifice. So, we'll need just two uh, References from the word of God, apart from my own understanding of the subject, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 3. Whose whose adorning can it not be that outward adorning of cleaving the hair and of wearing of clothes or of putting on of a cover? Very clear. Let it not. Second, we read in verse 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves with modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety of mind. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves with modest apparel. With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair, not with gold, not with pearls or costly oil. Somebody asked me, can we hang some gold for me in our ears? <laughs> some uh, wooden things are also there, we can do that. Some plastic things are also there, very shiny, they look like pearls. So, not alone is good. If you love the Lord, beloved. You tell the Lord, Lord, I'm willing to give up these things in order to show my love for you as a little sacrifice. Now, a statement, what I made a little time ago, which brought about a certain change even in our Bethany. Listen carefully. This was one of the during worship messages said by this. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19 says, You are saved not by perishable gold and silver. Our soul which could not be saved by the perishable gold and silver, that same gold and silver has become so precious to me now that I am trying to adorn my perishable body. Just Nashman, Sone, Chandi, say, where Atma ka utar nahi ho saka, ab woli suna itna anmur ban gaya hai ki Nashman dev ko sajane ke liye mein istamal kar. Just think about it. And as I told you, this comes under the subject of sanctification, and your sanctified life shows how much you love. <coughs> Second question Can we Christians enter into other holy places such as temples and mosques? It is a bold capital letters M O. No. Read this word, the book of Numbers, chapter 23 and verse 13. The book of Numbers, chapter 23 and verse 13. And Barak said unto them, Come, I say, it's three hundred other days from whence thou mayest thou shalt see but the utmost part of them. Uh, sorry, just wait a minute, just wait a minute. Say, wrong, not numbers. Uh, I say 23 30, no? Uh, 23 and verse 13. Sorry, Exodus 23 and verse 13. Exodus 23 and verse 13. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect 
And make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard of thy mouth. You should not take the names of their gods. If you want to go to the Golden Temple, they will not allow you unless you put a scarf on your head. Till today, I did not go. I had the right to do that. But they said, without a scarf on your head, they will not allow you. Why should I wear a scarf on my head? Yeah. So each temple has their own uh, methods. So, wish as God's children, we should not go there. And secondly, we should not even take the names of their gods. Don't speak ill about their names, don't speak anything against their gods. But speak the good about what our Lord has done for us. Third question How to be patient when speaking to people who do not know about God? Some people, when they uh, speak against our Lord, they provoke us. They say some things to make us angry. They may, uh, they may say something about which we are provoked and we will say something very bad. So at that time, we should not be provoked. They don't understand, they don't want to understand, they may try to provoke us, they may say something false against our God or our Lord Jesus, but we should not be provoked, we should not be angry, and that's how we can show our patience. Where and how do you and other elders get the courage and confidence to speak and to tell about the word of God? <laughs> I want to meet this boy who is getting this question. I want to tell him not only the elders, look at the small child in the land of captivity, small maid. She had the boldness. I asked my master to go to school again, he will be healed, she said. If you love the Lord, you will have that boldness. Leave about elders and big people. Even small children also they can. Huh? Small children they can, young people they can. It only needs love for the Lord. This ends this big paper. How to focus in prayer for the thoughts disturb us from Johan. He has written his name. Johan, raise your hand. I also have faced this problem. It's not a strange thing. But the boxing himself has faced this problem. Somebody asked him, Brother, I can read Bible in one hour, but I'm not able to pray for five minutes also because my thoughts keep wandering and I go to sleep. So the boxing told me, I am also facing the same problem. I will pray for you, you will pray for me. And people used to say about the boxing, he used to sleep in his prayer and pray in his sleep. Yeah? So this is a common human problem. So, one good thing I learned from my wife is she becomes. I guess so disturbing. <laughs> that is how she feels. She says, that helps me. So, you also are supposed to do like that. Don't be quiet. If you stay quiet, you'll go to sleep. So, you also open your mouth and pray loudly. That's the only solution I can think about. Otherwise, it's a common a believer's problem. And then can bring laptop, iPad to the pulpit every time when giving message. This is a very what do you call it? It's a, like a shopping attack. <laughs> Somebody wants to trap me. I counsel them. Not to bring this electronic gadgets into the house of God. We don't need it. We don't need it. If anybody wants to preach a message, and if you're not able to remember your thoughts, do one thing. Sometimes I write some references, some new references, some of the old things which are in my memory, I need one. But some of the new references if I want to connect it, I just write it through. This I can develop even for one hour. So you can write on a piece of paper. You can write a piece of paper. Some people, they read the Bible with the mobiles. So one servant of God said, what is this? <laughs> Tell it clearly. <laughs> Do you have a holy mobile? Yeah, that's the difference. So if you want to write a message which you cannot remember, I will counsel. Don't bring laptop, don't bring my personal thing. Use a paper. Use a paper. It's enough. You are not there to write the whole message, all together. Some sketch of the message, 
And then when you stand, the Holy Spirit of the Lord will help you to fill in those blanks and the message will be full. So uh, it is my personal opinion. Don't bring laptops, don't bring iPads, especially to the pulpit when you're giving a message. Use pen and paper. If a person does not worship in the congregation, can he still give worship message in the church? I will consult with your elders and then solve this problem. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to tap me? I will take guest who is coming here. <laughs> If you want to know what I am doing in Pune, I am inviting you for the youth camp from May 16 to 21. You come there along with this slip and give this slip there. Then I will answer you. What are I doing? It's a, it's a practical matter. What to do? Some things are happening. We have degraded so much in our values, so much we are diluted that we are not able to consider these things. In the early days, where the Dora has. Have you seen Dora Dora? No. You are not. I also have not seen, but I have heard about it. Where the Dora Dora, the first elder of devotion in our tradition. Everyone also was not there. Dora Dora, Rav Ratna, and Rajnavi. Uh, you are not seen there. You have not seen him. So, Dora Dora's brother, after the table exhortation, he used to go to break bread. And in those days, I'm talking about 1950s. First time, carbon paper had come in India. Nobody knows what is carbon. Carbon paper is simple to not know. You can keep the carbon paper and you can take multiple copies. If you want to have three copies, write it more hard. <laughs> so in one writing, you will get two copies, you will get three copies. So it was such a fanciful item that some of the believers, the fighting used to bring one from carbon paper school. And in those days, even those pins with which you used to join the papers. These are all new things. I'm talking about 60, 70 years ago. And they were so fascinated by the beautiful steel type of pin with a beautiful head. They used to bring some pins at home. What Dorada used to say, if you have brought a carbon paper from your office, don't raise that unclean hand to take part in it. If I consider that to be a godly counsel, if I want to live up to that level of my sanctification, a person who does not worship must not be given worship message. Think about the standards where we live. Brother Boxing used to say during the convocations, some people they don't get need, so they give false what certificate. Medical certificate. Brother Bhakti used to say, ask forgiveness from the Lord. Don't give fake medical certificate and come for a convocation. That was what our God servants were in the early days, our fathers were in the early days. The standard was so high, so sublime in telling you, there was no difference between a God servant and an ordinary people. They all used to walk in the same level of faith. Once again, listen to me carefully. There was no difference between a God servant and an ordinary believer. They all maintained the same level of faith, same level of sacrifice, same level of separation. I know my father was working the day this. If he has to go for a vacation, he will go to the God servant and tell him, brother, I have got leave, so I'm going to have an annual visit, I'm going to ask. If the God servant will say, brother, you have to stay there because next week we are going for a camping or some of the Archipel program lunch is coming here and there to meet you. He will cancel his vacation and stay by a word for us. What life of unity, what life of subjection, what life of uh, what we call togetherness. We are lost all the things. Our hearts are scattered. Very sorry to say. We have brought strangers into the work of the Lord. Those who have not received the fire from above, but they have brought it from outside. And such people 
in many ways have brought such destruction during the times. So may the Lord help us. And I don't know who has given this question in this paper. If there is anything of this sort in the local combination, at least for the sake of this young generation who are concerned about such matters, it hurts them. It may be a genuine concern for them. How can it be? So take care. If a person is not worshipping audibly in the congregation, is there any word that we should have audible worship in the congregation? Yes, there is. Psalm 111, verse 1. Psalm 111 and verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. With my poor heart in the assembly of your friend mm. and in the congregation. In the congregation means how many people? Good mm. number say about 50. In the congregation, who will worship? I, I will I worship. worship. That's all. So individual worship is one of the great privileges the Lord has given to us. I will add many more and then I close this session. I was only one year old in the ministry. I was very young. I was not even 35. In those days, we never had even a uh, prayer house of our own. So we used to have gathered at school. A young man, 24 years old, Kumar, his name is, he came from World Vision to attend our worship service. After the worship service, he was so happy. He came and he hugged me and said, Uncle, oh, the child. I was so happy. But I want to tell you one thing, Uncle. When you come, you worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And then after worshiping in the spirit and in truth, again you take the table message, say, judge yourself, and you examine yourself, take part worthily, and you concentrate yourself, ask forgiveness for everything what you have done. What I believe, Uncle, what I feel, immediately after you come, if you examine yourself and take part in the table worthily, automatically worship will come in worship, the spirit and in truth. See the logic. Then I said, Kumar, I do not know. This is what our fathers have taught us. This is what we have received from our uh, servants of God. We have been faithfully following. We have a question about it. I would help if you insult him. Because he was an ordinary working boy, 24 years old from World Vision, I am supposed to be a God servant. I was a little disturbed. I said, Kumar, I will think about it. And if I get the proper answer, why this order of service in our fellowship, I will certainly help you. Later on, after thinking about it, I developed a doubt on the boxing. Lord the boxing is too wise a man. He's a very wise man. He's got a photographic memory. He's uh, not of the ordinary level. Even his uh, uh, ordinary conversation has much to teach us. When you sit with him at the dining table and you listen to the common conversation, what we have at the dining table, that also will teach us so many things. Such a man he is. I thought maybe he's a wise man. He must have himself thought about this order of service because 2,000 years have passed away since the Lord Jesus Christ has come and gone. No denomination, no uh, speaker, no missionary, no great person has ever thought about this order of service in the Christian life. Martin Luther has come and gone, great preachers have come and gone, great missionaries come and gone. From where did he get this pattern? Singing of songs and then worship message, then individual worship, then table message, then taking part of the table, then the table prayer, and then we have final message, then we have offerings, and then after offerings we go away for open air preaching. This is the order of the day, open air preaching. After the open air preaching, we come back to have our love feast. The immediately after love we have an evening gospel meeting. And then, if you come to the church at 9 o'clock in the morning, you will go at only 9 o'clock in the evening. After going back in the evening, you have to cook your food in the early morning, 7 o'clock, you have to go to your office. I developed a doubt on Brother Baksi. I was troubled for more than six months. I wanted to find out from where did he get this order of service, which nobody had, no denomination had, no person in the last 2000 years. Since Christ rose again from the dead and he went to heaven. Once uh, it happened so in that year, Brother Philip, 
he was uh, about to give the table message. He said, I, all I want to sit, I was translated for him. I want to sit and you read the portion, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23, or you read it. So I began to read it automatically, and he was sitting. There the Lord opened my eyes. First, I will tell you in Hindi, because uh, um, uh, I mostly speak in Hindi in Pune. Only here I'm speaking so much English. <laughs> My eyes were open, and I don't know what was the particular message. I was thinking, Lord, when this message will be over, when I will go down the pulpit and call Kumar and tell him, this is the work through which I have got it. First, he gave thanks, and then he prayed it. He broke it. Later on, God gave me the privilege to have a, a study of the book of John. That's my favorite book in the whole Bible. Still, I keep on meditating about it. We had morning devotion for more than 19 months on that book. So, when I was uh, uh, thinking about John's gospel, there also beautifully the Lord opened my understanding. John, now listen to the sequence John chapter 10. I am the, no, no, don't open. It's not a study, just a listen to the secrets. John chapter 10. I am the road. I am the good shepherd. That is the gospel. Huh? John chapter 11. And uh, Lazarus has come out from the grave. He has come out from the grave, salvation, but is still bound with coffin clothes. Then Lord said, Open his coffin clothes. That is sanctification. Salvation and sanctification, both in one chapter 11. Then comes chapter 12, breaking of the alabaster box, that is worship. Then comes John chapter 13, when Jesus Christ is washing the feet of his disciples, speaking about the Lord's table. Then comes the John chapter 14, 15, and 16, the final message. Then comes John chapter 17, the table prayer, where the Lord Jesus Christ is praying, not only for his disciples, but also for those who are going to believe upon the Lord through their testimony, when they go to give the gospel, when they go to share the word of God, many people will believe. That means Jesus Christ was praying both for believers and unbelievers. That's exactly what we were today. Then John chapter 18, Jesus is standing before Pilate saying, this world is not my home. That is the preaching of the gospel, what we do. John chapter 19 is crucifixion. John chapter 20 is resurrection. John chapter 21, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Come, start serving me. Look at the sequence. John chapter 10, gospel. Chapter 11, salvation and sanctification. Chapter 12, worship. 13, God's table. 14, 15, 16, final message. 17, table prayer. 18, preaching of the gospel. 19 and 20, the work of the cross in our lives before we begin to serve. When I told Eddie until when he came to me, when I told him, he caught hold of me and wept so much, he cried. And then he said, Paul, I will counsel you. Wherever you go, whether you have this theme or not, keep telling this. Worship is a privilege in our fellowship, which we have learned under the shadow of the great man, of the great man for us. We are not praising any man, but we are privileged to call him as our spiritual father. He has taught us. Sometimes, Brother Baksi, you know, he will not worship from here. All the things for the full bit, but sometimes he will not sit here. He will go out and he will come there. He will sit at the back. He will worship there and then come. He also wants to join like that and worship. It's an honor. It's an honor. In other words, beloved, it's just saying thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of great salvation. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. If at least that we are not able to acknowledge. In some homes, when I give a chocolate to children, and the child doesn't say thank you, what will the mother say? Hey, thank you, <laughs> Thank you, Lord. What will the uncle say? Say that we force our children to say that you love me. I am also a servant of God like Father. Now I will force you. Hey, sit there. Shall we say? After coming back, we are going to stay for only 15 to 20 minutes. Do we have any testimony, brother? No need. 
So we break for T. Huh? Yeah. Sharp three thirty will come with at least the one chorus that is close by four. Session. Some very pertinent questions, some uh, relating to doctrine, some relating to our practical Christian living, some relating to the 